Hello and welcome to the 2024 Baking Challenge, week number eight. I can't believe it's week number eight. So this is a challenge that I have done for myself where I have chosen 52 recipes that I've never tried before. So it's one recipe for every week of the year and I hope that you bake along. I can promise you four things. We're baking on a budget, we're cutting corners whenever we can, we are altering recipes to accommodate for the picky eater and my allergies, and we're making messes and mistakes, and that's okay. So for week number eight, this is braided lemon bread, and I'm sorry to tell you it's a little bit of a complicated recipe, but that's okay. Now this is a two-part recipe. It's gonna take up a good portion of your day, and I apologize in advance, but hopefully it's gonna be worth it. So, Let's get baking. So before you wanna get started on this recipe, whether you're making your lemon curd or not, you're gonna to wanna to set some things out because your yogurt, your butter, and your eggs for the dough are all gonna to need to be room temperature and soft. So make sure that you get those out well ahead of time before you start, I got mine out pretty early this morning, so I like to get the sticks of butter out and put it on a plate that way, because it gets a little greasy, I don't like getting it on the countertop, but make sure that you have all that out, it needs to be room temperature before you start your dough. Braided lemon bread sounds bright and happy, and if you're thinking, gosh Katie, that's not the right season for lemon, you're right, it's not. This should absolutely be like a summer kind of bake, but if you're anything like me and you're trapped in the Midwest and it's February and your temperatures are going like this and the skies are gray and it's always cloudy and the grass is dead and you're longing for spring, then make this because hopefully this is gonna help alleviate some of those feelings of winter depression. So like I mentioned earlier, this is a little bit of a complicated recipe and there's two parts. We are going to need lemon curd for the recipe. Now, I live in the middle of nowhere and my grocery store is Walmart and they did not have lemon curd. But King Arthur has us covered. They have an easy microwave lemon curd recipe. So that's what I'm gonna make first in this video. And you can make your own lemon curd or if you're lucky enough to have a store that you can buy it, do that. Make it easy on yourself. This doesn't seem too complicated of a process, just a little time consuming. So let's get into it. Let me show you what I'm working with here. Okay, so you can see that. All right, now for this lemon curd recipe, you are going to need lemons. <laughs> I have my lemons right here. No, they are not in season. No, these lemons do not look great, but that's okay. A couple other things you're gonna need if you're making the lemon curd is you're gonna need a zester or a microplane. I have this fantastic contraption from Pampered Chef. It's got a bowl here. It comes with a zester and it also comes with the juicer, which we are absolutely going to need. Let me bring that camera up just a little bit because it's a little low. Okay, there we go. Now you can see a little better. Um, I do love Pampered Chef. I don't love Pampered Chef prices. I do have a few things here and there, and I have found some dupes, like my measuring cups. Let me show you my measuring cups real fast because I thought that this was a fantastic design, and it is. Um, let me show you here. So these are my Pampered Chef measuring cups. And when you're looking inside, it's got the measurements right there. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's gonna be great. That's gonna keep me from, from going like this and trying to read the outside. Well, the problem is that the writing is in black, my countertops are in dark brown, and I have vision problems. So these worked great for a while, but I was still tipping over to try and make sure that I was on the line. What I found and said on Amazon is these fantastic measuring cups by OXO and it has the measurements on the inside, but it also has them backed by a nice light color. 
so I can absolutely see these very easily. And it came in a three cup set. I got them off Amazon, fantastic. I'll put the link below. But I haven't found a dupe for this yet and I love this thing. I have a regular microplane, I have a juicer. I really like being able to just use this. Now, the recipe comes for the zest, calls for the zest of one lemon. So let me dry off my lemon here so I'm not zesting my fingers. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And honestly, we're gonna be straining the zest out. So you can do more than one if you want. I very well might because the recipe also comes for three fourths of a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice, if you have it. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I, that's one thing I always enjoy about these recipes that call for lemon zest is that my whole kitchen smells so bright and fresh whenever we're doing this. Um, this one has a little bit of a weird spot, so I'm not going to zest that point. I'm just going to put my finger over it and zest around it. I am going to go ahead and do two lemons worth of zest for this, just because I can. And I was going to try and experiment too, see if maybe I could zest all of these lemons squeeze them because they're not long for this world. Lemons are not in season here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead after I do this and I'm gonna zest all of these lemons and then I'm gonna put the zest on my dehydrator and dehydrate it and see if it's still usable after that. And then I have these fantastic little um, freezer cups. I'll have to show you that on a different I love them though, but you can put things like um, oils and butter with herbs and lemon juice, freshly squeezed juices, and they're measured out in specific measurements. So the one that I would use for my freshly squeezed lemon juice to freeze, they're measured out in tablespoons. And then they have a little lid that clamps down over it. And I've done that before. So, okay, that is the zest from two. That is a lot of zest. I will say that, that's quite a bit of zest. That's okay. Um, one thing you're also gonna, so you're gonna need a couple things for this recipe. You're gonna need your lemon zest. You're gonna need your lemon juice. You are going to need two full eggs, large eggs, and then two large yolks. So I've got four yolks in this bowl, but only two whole eggs. So you can set the yolks aside, or not the yolks, you can set the whites aside, you can scramble them. Um, I did that for the dog, she loves scrambled eggs. You're also gonna need eight tablespoons of melted butter. Melt this ahead of time because you don't want it to be hot when you add your egg, because then you're just gonna end up with scrambled egg. So all of this is gonna get put together. My butter is not hot, I'm just gonna dump my zest in there. That is a lot of zest. Maybe you only want one lemon and that's fine too. And then we're gonna juice these lemons because we need three fourths of a cup of lemon juice. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I do wish that this juicer had the uh, measurements a little easier to read. It's very tiny print here on the side and it's just like embossed. So it's not in a different color or anything. I am not great at juicing lemons. And I'm gonna end up putting these down the garbage disposal. It's good for making it smell better. At least that's what I've always read, is that you could put um, lemon slices and ice to clean your uh, garbage disposal. I don't know if that actually works, but I've done it. All right, where am I at here? I am at, 
I'm not even at a half and I need three fourths. So um, yeah, this is gonna take, it's gonna take a few lemons. So just do yourself a favor and grab a bag of lemons. Now, last year I would have been able to pick the lemons from the lemon tree, but it caught a fungus last year and it did not recover. So it is no longer with us. We still have both of the banana trees and the fig tree and the lime tree that has never produced any kind of fruit. Um, actually, the banana tree sprouted a new tree um, this winter. So now I've got to, I've got a purpose for the big pot that the lemon tree was in. I'll be putting the new banana tree in it because I think that really only one pot, only one tree per pot is needed. So, all right, where am I at now? Almost to three fourths of a cup. I think one more lemon should do it. Oh my gosh, my hands are all slippery now. Woo, lemon. And I have a cat over here that is really wanting me to pet him. Sorry, Gooster, not now. Don't open the cabinet doors, dude. It's so funny. All of our cats, we have four of them, they all have such incredibly different personalities. And the two, so we've got Maverick, he's the what I like to consider the oldest. He's our tuxedo cat. And he's the biggest out of the bunch. And he kind of rules the roost and keeps everybody in line. Um, and he is, right now he is sleeping on his back with his legs spread out underneath the couch. Um, I absolutely had to chuckle as I walked past because that's such a maverick thing to do. His brother Goose looks nothing like him. Um, Maverick was one of four boys. There we go. That's three fourths of a cup. Yay. Maverick was one of four boys and three of them were tuxies. And then Goose was the lone ginger. He's not a full ginger. He's ginger and white. All right. I'm going to stir my lemon juice in there into my melted butter and my lemon zest. Um, and he is a love bug. And it's so funny because he'll, he'll cuddle with me and then he'll drool all over me. And it's very amusing. Okay, you're also gonna need, I'm gonna wash my hands real fast. You're gonna need um, one entire cup of granulated sugar. And my hands are sticky, so I'm gonna wash those real fast. You know, we are gonna replace this sink probably this year. And I want one of those touchless ones because we have a soap dispenser next to it that is touchless and rechargeable. I love rechargeable things. All right, let me grab my sugar because I absolutely forgot that I was going to need a full cup of sugar. Um, so I would like a touchless sink faucet as well. I think that would be great. All right, there's a half a cup. Here is a full cup. Okay, I'm gonna mix that and then I'm gonna whisk the eggs in. I maybe should have made this a separate video for anybody that wanted to make their own, but here we are. We're already going, we're going with it. Get that all incorporated. So this is gonna get cooked in the microwave you're gonna want a bigger bowl. Per the recipe, about an eight cup bowl should help with boil over. I um, have got pasta sitting in my larger bowls. And so this is as big as I've got right now. I mean, I had a giant one, but I felt like that was overkill. So when I do put this in the microwave, I am gonna put it on a plate just in case it bubbles over. Okay. 
All right, I have all of that incorporated, right? Our three fourths of a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice, a cup of granulated sugar, eight tablespoons of melted but cool butter, two large eggs, two egg yolks, and the zest of, well, two lemons. The other thing that we're gonna need is a strainer, a mesh strainer, and a bowl, okay? This is gonna go into the microwave for one minute increments. So I'm gonna stick this in the microwave for one minute, and then I'm gonna bring it out and I'm gonna stir. And then I'm going to put it back in the microwave and bring it out and stir. So one minute increments. When it starts to thicken, I'm gonna decrease the time in the microwave to 30 seconds, okay? And then it's done when it coats the back of a spoon and starts to mound a little bit when you stir it. All right, the temperature needs to reach at least 185 degrees. I am absolutely going to use a thermometer for that because we are dealing with eggs and that makes me nervous. So I've got a thermometer. Is this the new one? I got one that's recharged. I love rechargeable things. And now I need to figure out, I got one for Scott for Christmas and now I need to figure out where it went. Um, hopefully this one's got batteries. Yeah, okay, 185 degrees. And then when it's done, we're gonna put it in a bowl and, or no, we're gonna put, pass it through the strainer into a bowl. We're gonna cover it with plastic wrap and you're gonna make sure that the plastic wrap is touching the surface of the lemon curd. That way it's not gonna form a skin, okay? So let me go put this through the microwave and I'll see you back in a couple minutes. Should take about eight minutes total is what they're saying. Okay, my lemon curd is done. It's registering at 187. Now you may see some egg, uh, like scrambled egg in your lemon curd and that's okay. We're gonna be straining that out. That happens sometimes. Um, especially if your microwave doesn't heat evenly. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, let me close this so it turns off. Okay, the next step is to pass it through a strainer. So you're gonna need a strainer, a bowl, and a spatula. I really hope this bowl is gonna be big enough. Let's find out. I may spoon mine in, cause that looks like if I try to dump it, I'm gonna make a mess. Let me grab a measuring cup. Also, this bowl is really hot, so I don't want to touch it. Okay. So you're gonna spoon or pour into your strainer, and then you're gonna use your spatula or a spoon to just kind of work that through. I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of dipping out of here, dripping out. And as much of that curd to come through. And then when it's really not dripping anymore, I will throw what's left. See, I've got lemon zest and scrambled eggs in here. Um, so then I'll just toss that into the garbage disposal drips off and then I will go for the second round. All right. And I'm just doing a few rounds of this because it's easier for me to get this through the strainer. So if I get too much of the pulp and the zest in here, then it's gonna be hard for me to work through. Um, takes more effort than it's worth. So as I'm pushing around on the inside of the strainer, I'm watching to see how much liquid is coming out the bottom. And when it starts to be none, then I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna scrape all of that off of the bottom and discard it. I 
And I'm gonna try to scrape as much of that out of my strainer as I can so that it's more room for the liquid. Ouch, this bowl is still hot. But I'm gonna go ahead and dump the rest. It smells amazing. Um, so I'm super excited about this. And I imagine it's gonna thicken up as it cools a little bit more. I was worried that mine wasn't thick enough, but then I started to see even more egg. I've never made lemon curd before. So this is a new to me process. I don't think I've ever made any, I don't think I've even had lemon curd before. So new experiences all around and I love that for us. Or for me, maybe you've had it before and this is old news to you. It's really weird to see the, uh, the scrambled egg in here. It's trippy, it's kind of gross. All right, that is a beautiful bowl of lemon curd and I'm really proud of it. And you should be proud of it too. Even if you bought lemon curd, store-bought lemon curd, Hey, you did the shopping, man. You're here, you're making the recipe. Okay, cover it with plastic wrap. Make sure that your plastic wrap is sitting on top of the surface of the lemon curd. Things like this, like custards and things, can form a skin and that's gross. And then you'd have to get rid of that. So why does it always have to be plastic wrap? Because it does. That actually wasn't that hard to cut this time. Okay. Come on. <laughs> As I fight with the plastic wrap. All right, and then we're not gonna refrigerate this. We're just gonna set it on the counter and let it exist in its own happy little lemon world. Okay, your lemon curd is done. Make sure you have your room temperature ingredients, set up your mixer, get everything that you're gonna need for your sponge and your dough, and I'll see you back in a couple minutes. So about the lemon curd, you're actually gonna wanna let that sit out on the counter until it's just barely warm and then stick it in the fridge, still covered like it is. It needs to chill for about three hours to reach that super thick consistency that we're gonna want for our filling. Okay, it can also be stored in the fridge in an airtight container for a week or two, I think the recipe said. Okay, lemon curd aside, and mine's too hot to go in the fridge still, so maybe start yours early. We're gonna start on the sponge part of this recipe. Now, what is sponge? That is the activated yeast part of the recipe. Because they're calling it a sponge, that tells me that it's gonna be a little finicky. So whenever I'm working with yeast, and I know that it has the potential to be a complicated and unforgiving recipe, I'm going to measure my flour. I have this fantastic food scale um, fusion with a Z and I'm gonna measure my flour. I'm gonna set my mixer bowl right on there and yes, I'm using my mixer because I don't wanna do all that work. We're gonna need two attachments. You're gonna need your beater attachment and then eventually you're gonna need your dough hook. Um, I have not used the dough hook with this new machine but with my old KitchenAid mixer, I really had to watch it because the dough would climb the hook and that is a mess you do not wanna clean. Can you do this by hand? Absolutely you can. You're gonna wear yourself out um, but you're gonna have a heck of a workout. Okay, the sponge. <clears throat> Starting with the flour, you are going to measure a half a cup or 60 grams of flour. Now I've got my half cup here and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of loosely fill that and give it a little shake and I'm going to turn on my scale with the bowl on it. That way it's reading zero. And what did I say, 60 grams? So I'm gonna change my unit to make sure that I am at grams, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna start just putting a little bit in here at a time until I hit that 60 
Mark, I'm at 54. 63. So I'm going to grab a spoon and just take a little bit out at a time until I hit 60. Because I really don't want to mess this recipe up. That's 59.1, 61.8. It's a dance, I tell you. All right, I've got it at 60.9. I'm going to take a little. Okay, 60 on the dot. Yes. All right, turning this off. Um, so, turning it off. I like to use this when it's berry season because then I know how many berries we've gotten. Okay, you're gonna need three-fourths of a cup of lukewarm water. As long as your water is between, I think, 75 degrees and like 130, you're gonna be good. Anything over 130 and you're gonna kill your yeast. Anything under 75 and it's not gonna activate. Um, my water was at 95. I used my temperature gauge to check it out and it was at 95. So I'm adding my water. Okay, then you're going to add a tablespoon of instant yeast. I have bread machine instant yeast, so that's what I'm using. Gonna dump that right in there. And you're also gonna need two teaspoons of granulated sugar. All right, because yeast likes sugar. I am right there with you. So, all right, so you've got your three-fourths a cup of lukewarm water, your two teaspoons of granulated sugar. I don't know why I'm putting the lid back on there because I'm gonna need it again. Um, your tablespoon of yeast and your half a cup of flour or 60 grams. Um, there we go. And your paddle. And you're just gonna stir it after you raise your bowl if you have a lift one. I always forget to do that. Sometimes this thing, there we go. All right, I'm just gonna let that mix for a minute, okay? Um, once it's incorporated and all stirred up together, we're gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. The sponge should be bubbly after that. That's how you know it's activated. I do not know why I was hitting the edge there. I guess I didn't have it down on the pins all the way. All right. I'm not gonna mess with my plastic wrap again, so I'm just taking my towel and kind of covering it loosely. And then you wait your 10 minutes. If your water was a little on the cool side, you might have to wait a little bit longer. You're gonna be able to tell that it's activated from the bubbles. So give it 10 to 15 minutes, an extra five minutes if you had cooler water. In the meantime, your two room temperature eggs are gonna to need to be beaten. So make sure you have that done. Make sure you have the rest of your ingredients and a comically large spatula. All right, you don't need the comically large spatula, but it's funny. So, and the other one was in the dishwasher because I've already been baking today. Um, all right, uh, let's come back in about 15 minutes. I might wanna add that for the dough, you're gonna need to add a bunch of things to the sponge. And one of those things is four and a half cups of flour, um, which is, about 540 grams. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out now. I've got my big bowl on here. Just gonna turn on, and I'm measuring everything for this recipe, weighing, every, weighing the flour especially, um, because I really don't wanna mess this up. This recipe makes two loaves of this beautiful bread, and I'm excited about that, and my neighbor is excited about that. So, rock on. Three eighty-seven. What did I say? Five forty. 
Yeah, 540. So in the recipe on the website, it says five cups, but we're only adding um, four and a half or 540 grams. 513, so I need to start watching it now. 37. 41. So once again, I'm going to take a little bit off the top. That's 38. That's 39. 40 on the nose again. All right. So while your dough is resting, maybe weigh your flour out. Now I'll see you back in about 10 minutes. Okay, so um, I still have about eight minutes left, but I'm going to show you mine is getting bubbly. You can see all the bubbles there. I still have some lumps, but you can see, and it smells really yeasty, but you can see it's starting to bubble. So that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, like I said, I still have probably eight or 10 minutes left, but that's kind of the consistency that we're going for. So that's what you need to be looking for. All right, mine is done. It's been about 11 minutes and I don't wanna wait any longer. So I'm gonna raise my bowl up and I'm gonna just start it stirring a little bit here. I don't know why my mixer has started doing this recently, but I have to kind of give it a little nudge. All right. While that's stirring with the paddle attachment, we're going to add our six ounces of plain or vanilla yogurt. I just got, this is a six ounce exactly. So I don't eat yogurt. Um, so I didn't want to get a giant tub of it, but uh, I should probably, you know what, I'll just use this spoon. So we're going to dump that. And remember room temperature, which just seems gross. But, you know, whatever. I trust King Arthur. They have not steered me wrong yet. I've done all of the steering for anything that's gone wrong. A little bit in here. Okay. Gross. I'm trying to keep the kitchen as clean as possible because I've already trashed it once today. We are also going to add our two beaten eggs. There we go. You know what? I'm not gonna go with my comically large spatula because this one got cleaned. All right, we also need two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm gonna measure it because I don't want to mess anything up with this recipe because I really want this one to go very well. So there's one teaspoon and two teaspoons. Your eight tablespoons of soft butter and my butter is very, very soft. So soft that I am reluctant to touch it. What did I, oh, there's my, Keep looking, I lose spatulas like crazy. Um, gross. Ugh. Uh, there we go. Okay. I'm just gonna let that kind of incorporate in. Um, half a cup of sugar, I believe it says. Yes, half a cup of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of table salt. I went ahead and put everything in with my flour mixture. So when my butter gets a little more mixy here, I'm just gonna start scooping this in. Which is now. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna scoop our flour mixture in and we're just doing a nice low stir for now because you don't want your flour flying everywhere. That's like I just did. Um, and then once I get everything added, I'll turn up the speed a little bit and we're gonna get this mixed so that it is showing a shaggy dough. 
Then we're gonna turn it off and switch to the dough hook, or that's where you would pull it out and knead it by hand, which I'm not going to do. So definitely starting to get a little more shaggy here. I'm trying to get that flour right there in the middle. Boop, boop, boop. You know, after the first month, I was wondering if I was gonna be able to pull off another month of this. And I'm so happy that I have because all of these recipes, while some of them have been really messy and some of them have been really challenging and I wouldn't count all of them as successes, the majority have been pretty great and I've learned a lot of new things and that makes me very happy. Okay, I'm gonna kick this up a little bit and I'm starting to see more of a, a shaggy dough, although I do have quite a bit of flour. No, there it goes. Sometimes you just gotta kick up the speed. Whoop, too much, too much speed. Sometimes you just gotta kick up the, the speed a little bit, I think. All right, there is my shaggy dough. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm going to lower my bowl and take the beater off, scrape. It's a very heavy, stiff dough and it's gonna get worse. So remember the recipe called for five cups of flour, but we were only putting in um, four and a half. So the rest of that flour may be needed. That's why it calls for five cups total. Um, now that we have the paddle out of the way, we're going to put in our dough hook and I'm just scraping everything off that I can. Okay. So dough hook goes on and I believe they said at a speed number two, let me double check that. Yes, speed two until a soft, smooth dough forms about five to six minutes. Here's where that extra flour comes into play. If yours is not doing what it is supposed to be doing, start adding just a spoonful of flour at a time. Okay. My brand new mixer is not, come on. There we go. Okay. And like I said, my old KitchenAid mixer, um, it really got obnoxious with the dough and it would start to climb the hook. And I, the first time I used it, I did not notice and it got all up in there. It was a mess. So when I'm using my dough hook, I'm not gonna walk away. I'm just gonna sit here and stare at it until it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, I think I'm gonna scrape the sides a little bit, try to get this kind of down in there without like making too much of a crazy mess here. <laughs> okay, starting to come together a little. It is looking a little smoother, but not as smooth as it's supposed to. So I'm gonna take a tablespoon here, about a half a tablespoon, and I'm gonna add a little bit of flour all over everything. And I'm just gonna wait and see what that does. Patience seems to be the name of the game, and you all know I don't have any when it comes to baking. Um, but, That may have helped a little bit. This is awkward, isn't it? Just standing here, staring at each other. Is it awkward for you? Because it feels really awkward for me. I feel like I'm gonna start sweating. <laughs> um, that actually helped quite a bit, but I'm not exactly where I think I should be. So whoop, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little more flour in here. That might've been too much. Wouldn't surprise me any. 
Oof. There we go. Yeah. Okay. It's not awkward at all. I will say, when we're done with this part, you're gonna cover this bowl with plastic wrap, right? Oh no, so you're gonna need a glass bowl, you're gonna need to lightly grease it, and then when this is done, we're gonna put it into the bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and leave it somewhere for an hour to an hour and a half. It needs to double in size, it needs to get really, really poofy. So, because I can never remember where I started versus where I finished, I will either take a picture with my phone or I'll get my wet erase markers and I'll just mark the line on the side of the glass bowl where it started so that I can tell if it doubled in size or not. I love wet erase markers for stuff like that. I use it when I make sourdough to judge how much um, my starter has doubled. It doesn't smudge but it washes off with water. So I actually use wet erase markers like all over the place. I will write notes on the mirror. Um, I laminate checklists for work stuff and then I can use those on my checklists. I like to be very, very organized even though my life is chaos. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour because it's not as smooth as I want it to be. And I think we only have a couple more minutes of this and then my dough, I believe, is gonna be ready. But my bowl is not. My bowl is not ready. Oh boy. I am going to use this bowl. And I'm just gonna use some cooking spray because that's where I'm at in life. Um, and that's okay. Where is my cooking spray? It's not there. It must be in the pantry. Well, of course it is. I am ill prepared for this video. Is anybody shocked by this? Cause I am not. Cooking spray. Really don't love this stuff because it's just greasy and messy and gross. Um, but it's also super convenient. Okay, let's see where we're at. It's smooth. Has it been enough time? It looks really sticky though. If it's really sticky, I'm gonna add more. Yeah, I'm gonna add more flour to mine. Um, I don't, because I know we're gonna be rolling this eventually, and I don't, whoop, thanks for that. Thank you, KitchenAid mixer. <laughs> Just having fun at this point. Okay. So the dough is gonna have to rest so it can rise for an hour to an hour and a half, okay? Then we get to the fun part, and I say fun part, that's when we're gonna roll it out, we have to separate it, then we have to put it in the fridge. Wait a minute, we might have to put it in the fridge. Um, no, so we don't have to refrigerate this dough before we work with it. So, after it's done resting and rising, we're gonna come back, we're gonna separate that dough in half, keep the one half covered while we work with the other. We're gonna roll it out, and then we're gonna get to the filling and the braiding. Once we're done with this, we're gonna prepare the filling, but I'm actually gonna do that um, after the dough's risen because my cream cheese, I forgot to set out, so it's not very soft. Um, I told you this is gonna be an all day bake for me because I am ill prepared. Done, done. All right, 
I don't want to touch it. I know I'm going to have to. Does anybody else have like major sensory issues? I'm still trying to recover from the truffles. Flavor was great, but my gosh, that mess was just awful. I don't think I ever used to be like this. Maybe it's old age, um, but that's okay. It's just where I'm at in life right now. Yeah, this is holding its shape pretty well. Um, work emails on a Saturday. No, thank you. We don't do that here. All right, I'm just gonna plop this into my bowl. If I can get it out of the mixing bowl. There it goes. This is heavy. I keep reminding myself it's not gonna be like a heavy bread. It's going to end up being a light bread. This just makes two loaves. Okay, I'm kind of going to flatten mine down a little bit just because I feel like it. Okay, now we're going to cover it with plastic wrap, leave it alone for 60 to 90 minutes until it's doubled in size and looks very poofy. And I will see you back when it's time. Okay, my dough has finished rising. I need to make the filling though. We've already made or purchased our lemon curd. Now the rest of the filling is six ounces of cream cheese softened. So you were gonna have that at room temperature along with sour cream, which also needed to be at room temperature. Mine is not because I forgot to set it out. That's a fourth a cup of sour cream, um, two teaspoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. There's mine. You're gonna want a fourth a cup of granulated sugar and a fourth a cup of flour. And you're just gonna mix all of that up until it is smooth. There's my fourth a cup of sugar and my fourth a cup of flour. And then my fourth a cup of sour cream. It's not coming out. Okay. And then we're gonna get that all mixed up, hopefully not making too much of a mess. I say that now, but you know I'm gonna make a mess. Um, this does not have to go in the fridge while we're working with our dough because you want it soft because we're going to spread it onto our dough when we're done rolling it out. Now, I have my rolling mat out, but I'm actually going to be rolling it onto parchment paper um, because we're gonna have to pick these up and put these on a baking sheet. So that's just gonna make it easier to move the loaf around as we get done. And don't freak out about the braiding process. It's, it's not as complicated as it seems. It seems like it's gonna be complicated. It's not, you're gonna be fine. If I can do it, you can do it. I mean, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna just assume that yes, I can do this. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna work through it. We're gonna do this together. Make sure that you're scraping the bottoms and the sides. I've got a lot of lemon juice hiding around here. Okay, that smells like cream cheese and sour cream and lemon and sugar. I bet it'll taste fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. Now remember, this recipe makes two loaves of bread. So, Air on the side of caution here and get a rather large thing out. Let's see here. Okay. 
We are going to roll this into a 10 by 15 rectangle. So I've got my inches lined up here. You know what? I'm going to go. What do we got? 21, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So six. Um, I think I made my paper too small. That's okay. It's fine. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. All right. We are punching our dough down a little bit and then we are going to separate it into half. So it says gently, I was not so gentle. You are going to need some flour. Got my flour duster out here. And let's get messy. Flour my hand too, because it's already sticking a little. Why not? Just put flour everywhere. We're gonna put that everywhere. Okay. That's because my pan, my bowl was greased. So that's why it's sticky. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna eyeball this and kind of rip it down the center. Okay, here is one bit of dough. Okay, so I keep saying that. I don't know what I'm doing. If you know what you're doing, great. I'm super happy for you. I don't. I talk a good game, but here we go. I'm gonna lightly flour the surface of my dough. And my rolling pin. Okay, I'm gonna try to go for the length first here. I know this is going to be pretty much the entire, yeah, that's, that's it. Okay. Now the width, I got to get this all the way down to 10 and having it in a rectangle is pretty important. You're definitely going to want to make sure that yours is a rectangle because we are braiding this. So it needs to be nice and even, um, absolutely trim your edges. If you need to, I'm going to need to. Um, and that's fine. I'm not going to discard the trim though. I'm going to add it to the other bit of dough just in case I need it. This is where I wish I kind of had like a bigger ruler, but fear not. I'm going to use my handy dandy pizza cutter. So I'm actually going to use, no, okay. See, I need this to be up more in this one corner so that I can really obsess over. <laughs> so I can really obsess over this. Okay, 10. Well, that's pretty square. That seems like a straight line to me. I'm gonna go up along my line here. I'm gonna look for a mat that has a grid on it because this is just stressing me out. Okay, and then like so, all right, ish, it's ish, and that's, that's as good as it's going to get today, and that's fine. Now, lengthwise, I'm going to turn this lengthwise, and here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to kind of divide this into thirds. And it says to use something long to press like a chopstick. Um, I have a metal straw, so that's what we're going to use. So I'm just kind of going to eyeball this a little bit and I'm going to gently press down just to leave the mark. So I know where my middle is. That looks Pretty good. I think I could press a little harder here. Okay. That looks even to me. All right. Now we're going to spread half of our cream cheese mixture just over the center. You're going to leave about an inch, right? I wanted to get my ruler for this 
Is it necessary to use a ruler? No, you could absolutely eyeball it if you want to. I don't want to chance it. So I'm going to use my ruler. Now it says we're gonna notch out an inch at the ends here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, and it's just on the sides. So I'm gonna mark my inch right there. And then I'm gonna get a different knife and I'm going to cut this section out. We're having tabs at the end because we're gonna use the tabs to fold over the ends of our bread. That should help keep the filling secure and help with the braiding pattern to kind of make it all come together. All right, that's one. Now I'm gonna do the other one. So let's see here, about there. And then eyeball it on the other side. I like using my pizza cutter for squaring up the edges because you have to go such a, such a long um, distance with it. But for the rest of what we're doing, you're going to want a knife because we're not cutting it all the way through. Okay. So see, I've got my ends notched out and there's tabs in the center. You're not going to put filling over those tabs. That's why I went ahead and cut those out first. Okay. I guess you can really heap this on there. I don't see why not. You're going to use half of the filling. So I'm kind of dividing it up here in the bowl and then slapping it on here. I'll grab a knife in a minute. So you're going to start with your cream cheese mixture and you're going to get that on. And then we're going to break out the lemon curd and spread that over the top as well, over the top of the cream cheese mixture. I'm going to bring this all the way down to my tab. I'm going to try to get it pretty close to the edges. Um, I'm going to kind of leave it, the bulk of it in the center. It smells really good. I swear I need to start having like tea parties so I can have friends over and we can eat delicious baked treats in the sunroom and uh, discuss books or plants or whatever. I definitely have plants on the brain. I have been scheming and planning garden stuff, honestly, <laughs> since October. So, so yeah we put in our kitchen garden last year but it, we put it in late so I had to buy plants I didn't start many seeds last year I really enjoy the process of starting seeds okay let me grab my lemon curd because I forgot to get that out of the fridge all right here's the lemon curd no skin on it. I'm going to leave that partially attached so that while I'm in the process of braiding, I can cover it back up so it doesn't get a skin on it. It looks so pretty. Um, I'm just going to spoon it over. It's definitely thicker than when it went in the fridge. I feel like it maybe could be a little thicker, but oh well. And I'm just putting it on pretty thick, like the cream cheese. Okay. All right, now I'm going to put that back on. As you can see, I'm going to have a lot of leftover lemon curd. That's fine. I'll figure out something to do with it. Okay, you can use the bench scraper or you can use a knife. Um, I think I'm going to use my knife 
and we're gonna cut strips every inch. So I have my ruler here so I don't mess this up. And you're gonna cut it all the way to that center line. So right, one inch strip. And we'll need my finagle. One inch strips, okay, yes. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're even on both sides. Once I get a few of these, I could absolutely eyeball this, but I am not gonna do that today. So. That's why I use this plastic ruler. And yes, it is getting filling all over it. That's okay because I'm just going to throw it in the dishwasher. My two end braids are gonna be a little on the large side. That's okay. Switching hands without stabbing myself. You know, I'm, I am just gonna eyeball the rest of these because I can line it up across. So thank you for your service there, dear ruler. I don't know where I'm gonna set you. Um, you know, it's funny, I can write with my left hand just as well as my right hand, but I am feeling a little shaky with my knife skills here. Move all of this stuff out of the way. I think, you know, the truffles were messy on your hands, but not really so much in the kitchen. I feel like this one is probably, other than the very first week with the star bread, I feel like this is a, a very messy bake. I have, destroyed my kitchen so many times today. I made a birthday cake earlier. Um, lots of people having birthdays in the first two months of the year. So, and if you hear any yelling, it's because the kiddo is playing video games with one of his buddies. So it usually dissolves into loud yells. Okay, here we go. All right, we're going to start on this end. We're going to fold this notch over the filling and then going at an angle. So this one is gonna go kind of to the second one in line. And then you're gonna start with the other one as well. And then we're just going back and forth, um, kind of matching up. So the first one here went over to the second one over here. The first one here went to the second one here. The second goes to the third. We're, we're lacing shoes. We're lacing shoes is all. And this is actually turning out pretty good. So try not to stretch your tabs um, too much because then you're gonna get a little bit of a lumpy side, I feel like. But I am I told you this wasn't going to be as difficult as it seemed. You can do it. We can do the hard things, you guys. Even if we don't do it perfectly, even if we don't get it right on the first try, we can do the hard things. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, this looks so pretty. I am, I am proud of myself here. I saw this recipe. I actually wanted to try this recipe like a year ago. And then I was like, oh, it looks so complicated. I don't know that I could braid anything. This is not that hard. It's not that hard. So I'm really glad that I tried the thing that I was worried I couldn't do. It kind of looks like a mummy. <laughs> oh, shoot, before you do the last two, um, you're gonna fold your tab over. Okay, you're gonna fold your tab over. That helps keep that filling in. And then you're gonna kind of braid and tuck. So I'm gonna kind of wrap it around the end there. T 
ta-da, <laughs> it's done. Woo, we did it, okay. Next thing we're gonna do is move this to our baking sheet. You can bake these on the same sheet, I'm going to. Um, you may wanna trim your parchment paper so that you're not having parchment paper kind of overlapping and, and covering it. So we're going to put this on our baking sheet and then we're gonna repeat the process with the other loaf, okay? Then these are gonna sit for 45 to 50 minutes. Cover them with a towel. You don't have to use plastic wrap. They need to be lightly covered. I have a pack of tea towels that I get from Amazon and I probably buy new ones every like two to three years. I use them exclusively for baking. They're great for a lot of things. Not so great at drying dishes because they're very thin, but I use them to cover things that are rising. I use them to throw over, you know, stuff that I don't want exposed to air for very long, especially if I have to walk away from it and the cats are roaming and feeling mischievous, I'll throw a towel over it. And then, like I said, every couple of years they get stained, they get a little bit thinner and threadbare. I just throw them out and replace them with new ones. It's not that hard. They're so cheap. All right, I'm going to put this on the pan and start the other one. Um, while they're rising, you're gonna want to preheat your oven to 375. And then um, once these have risen, we'll come back, we'll put our egg wash on, we'll put our sprinkling sugar on, we'll go over all that together. I'll see you back soon. All right, I let mine sit for about an hour and they're a little puffy. I wouldn't say that they got a huge rise on them. Look at me remembering to brush before I bake. <laughs> so you've got one beaten egg here. We're going to brush that over all of the exposed dough. Make sure you get into all those nooks and crannies. Okay, I love my silicone pastry brush. Oops. Making sure I get everywhere. I get messy with this part. I used to not. I used to like painstakingly make sure I didn't get the egg anywhere on the paper. Now I don't care. It's like whatever. It's going to be a mess anyways, so <laughs> let's just do it quick. Make it fast. But I am making sure to get up against the braids where they meet. Trying not to, so I do, from the rise, I do have a little bit of overflow of some of that lemon curd. And I am trying to make sure that I'm not brushing that around because I don't want it to burn on there. Making sure I get the end. All right, that one's brushed. And then we're gonna sprinkle with pearl sugar or coarse sparkling sugar. Obviously I don't have any of that, but I do have my coarse cane sugar. And this stuff is good enough, so I'm just gonna sprinkle this over the top. Is it gonna be as pretty as pearl sugar? No, but it's gonna do the same thing, and I have a lot of it. Thank you, Amazon. I use this stuff quite a bit too, so. It just adds a little, a little something special, a little howdy-do. I will say that the end over here um, did come untucked. It's a little too late to try to do anything about that now. So I'll probably have some filling leaking out while this bakes. That's okay. That's okay. It's going to taste the same no matter what it looks like. Although really, I'm, I'm impressed with my braiding skills here. This is, like I said before, this is the first time that I have ever braided um, bread, and I think it looks pretty darn great. I could absolutely see going somewhere, like going to a bakery and buying something like this. It's just so pretty. I hope it tastes as pretty as it looks. I have not cheated. I haven't tried the lemon curd. I haven't tried the filling. Um, so, yeah. That's okay. 
blind taste test this one. Usually I have an idea of how it's going to taste because I might try a little bit of the filling if it's safe to. I didn't do that this time. All right, sprinkling my sugar everywhere. I'm probably going a little too heavy on this sugar if I'm being honest, but I mean, oh well. <laughs> All right. See, now it's not even in places and I have to add a little bit more. Okay, 375 degrees for the oven. This is gonna go in for 25 to 30 minutes and then you're gonna need to cool it for 15 to 20 minutes before you can serve it. Um, I would imagine that's so that the filling can kind of solidify a little more. I had some leftover dough and I had a failed attempt at some crescent rolls, but you know what? I'm gonna put these in the oven anyways and just see what happens. Because I don't like um, wasting food. Even if it's a scrap of dough, I don't wanna waste it. I'm gonna try to do something with it. It was a mess, by the way, to try to get these to roll. So I'm not anticipating that this is going to be a successful experiment by any means. That's okay. We're going to do it anyways. We're going to try new things, even if those things are not sanctioned by any recipe or baker. Why not? It's fine. Everything's fine. And I got the kitchen mostly cleaned up, not all the way cleaned up, but that's okay because I'll clean it up later. And we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of sugar on here. See if I can't cover up the fact that it's ugly. And um, yeah, these might have to bake a little bit longer, but I'm gonna play it by ear. And I'm not gonna put these in with the bread because I have little ovens. Um, so they're, they're narrow and they're short. I cannot fit two trays of puffy things in there. It's not, it's just not gonna happen. So I'm gonna cook my bread first and then I will throw these in and I'll see you back in about an hour. Out of the oven, completely cool and it looks pretty. It would look pretty if it had like that pearl sugar that they use in the photos on the website, but I think mine looks pretty and I'm really excited to try it. So here goes nothing. I'm going to slice a little bit and onto the plate we go. Okay, there's definitely layers in here. Um, all right. Hmm. Yep. This is really good. The bread is not overly sweet, but it's sweet enough. The sugar on the top has a nice crunch to it. And the lemon curd has, I, I thought it might be really sweet because we've added sugar to the cream cheese and the lemon curd and the bread but the lemon curd has a really sharp tartness to it that's not sour. It's just got a little bit of a kick. I really enjoy this recipe. This is another great one by King Arthur. And I am really happy that I picked this one because it's so pretty. You know, I, I like the recipes that taste good, obviously. Mm. but it helps when they're really pretty too. So I'm gonna call this a complete win. I hope that you, oh, I set that down really loud. I hope that you have had the chance to bake along. Let me know in the comments what you liked about this recipe if you tried it. This is week number eight of a 52 week series where I have chosen a new recipe every single week. You can challenge yourself to bake along. You can go back and check out the previous videos you can just pick your favorites if you want. You don't have to follow along at all. You could check in, hit the subscribe button, just to see me mess things up in the kitchen. I do that a lot around here. 
If you do plan on baking along, head over to the Facebook page or the Instagram page. Every Wednesday morning, I release the shopping, shopping list for this week's upcoming bake. So you'll be able to get all your shopping done and have the ingredients. These videos come out every Saturday morning between seven and nine. It depends on uh, how together I am that week. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.